Well, Dr. Rockenpal, thank you very much for taking the time uh, today. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about peripheral arterial disease in this segment. And uh, tell us, as a vascular specialist, as a peripheral arterial disease specialist, when should a patient seek care from somebody like yourself? So if the patient has underlying risk factors, if you are a smoker, if you are a diabetic, if you have had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, if you have a strong family history, if you have any previous vascular issues like carotid artery disease, meaning you have a stroke or a mini stroke, if you have had heart disease, where you've been told that you have blockages, uh, all of those are the risk factors for developing lower extremity arterial disease or what we call peripheral arterial disease. And uh, if you have any of those uh, risk factors, and in addition, now you start hurting when you walk. So it's uh, extremely important to basically uh, recognize the symptoms, uh, especially in patients. A lot of these patients get uh, pushed to pain management and getting are getting uh, injections and, and physical therapy treatments, which of course is it's uh, in the right subset of patients will help them. But if you have, are a smoker and you're a diabetic and it, this the pain in your back coming down into your buttocks and your thigh, which does not get better with any pain management issues, but and every time you walk, it hurts, and every time you stop, it goes away, more likely means that there's a blockage in your circulation, which is supplying your, your, uh, your buttock, your thigh, and your legs. Um, when the disease gets advanced, it will cause a lot of pain at night when you rest. So the foot starts to get discolored, your foot starts to pain at night. You have to get up and dangle your feet by the side of the bed. It, there's numbness and tingling, uh, which is not secondary to any kind of nerve issues. Uh, there's an ulcer or a wound which is not healing. Um, again, points to the fact that your circulation needs to be checked. Now, you mentioned one of the risk factors as diabetes. How should diabetics take care of themselves so they do not develop advanced peripheral arterial disease? So diabetes causes more uh, microvascular disease, meaning the small vessels or small circulation arteries are affected more in diabetics. Now, if you are a diabetic and you are a smoker, then there's about eight times high likelihood of developing blockages in the uh, circulation. So, of course, number one is aggressive control of your diabetes, the number of things that the patients should be doing. Uh, your the A1C uh, recommendations by the guidelines, which you know various societies have put out, the A1C uh, level should be seven or less. You should be uh, having uh, a regular podiatry uh, foot care by a podiatrist who should be trimming your nails, paring your nails, and you should be wearing very comfortable shoes. Uh, there should not be any ulcers or or wounds which develop on your foot because in diabetics these get very difficult to heal. Um, so, so, so those are some of the basic, uh, you know, measures that the patients can take on their own. So if a diabetic is compliant, follows all your instructions, are there chances of uh, ultimately needing an amputation uh, less? Yes, absolutely. So and, and in addition to what I mentioned, the, of course, walking is the best form of exercise for lower extremity circulatory disease, the recommendations are you should be doing 30 to 45 minutes, six to seven days a week. Uh, what walking does, it it helps to uh, form the body form its own bypasses. Even if you have blockages, the body forms enough bypasses so, so that the blood flow is going, in, remaining intact in the lower part of the leg and the foot. And it reduces the chances of amputation for sure. Uh, the more the people walk, the less the chances of their having to lose a toe or a foot uh, secondary to this uh, the vascular disease. Dr. Lakhanpal, a patient that has a blocked artery in the legs, can you tr treat that without open surgery? Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with putting stents in the heart and going uh, through the groin or the wrist for the opening up the blockage in the heart. And we have the same technology available for the lower extremities, arterial circulation. So if there is a patient who has a blockage in the leg and that is, is causing a lot of compromise in the flow lower down in the form of a low pressure in the leg, as well as uh, significant symptoms, uh, we can open that up by putting in a, a access through the groin or it can be done through the foot. Basically give some numbing medicine in the groin or the foot, put in a, a small plastic tube, it's called a, a sheath, which goes into the uh, artery in the, in the foot or on the, in the groin 
and then we are able to advance a thin wire which, which which is able used to cross the blockage and once we are able to cross the blockage then we have various devices which we call atherectomy devices which help to get rid of as much of that blockage as possible some of them suck it out some of them just shave it and then we put a balloon and stretch that uh, blocked artery up and if needed we put a stent in so everything is done percutaneously and of course, if there is for some reason uh, the blockage is too long or it's in multiple areas or there is uh, it's been too chronic and we are not able to open it up through the with the wire and a balloon, then the option always is there to send the patient for a bypass. So when you do it percutaneously, does the patient go home the same day? Absolutely. So we do it in our outpatient facility. We have multiple outpatient labs where we, these procedures are done under uh, twilight uh, sedation or moderate sedation or, um, and uh, the patients are are able to go home the same day and the procedures are planned in such a way that they are able to go home the same way same day thank you again dr lockenball thank you for your time thank you